Hi, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a device that I think solves a problem every parent's had since the dawn of television. And that is their children leaving the TV on whilst they've left the room. So I've come up with this device that has a passive infrared sensor on the front which monitors motion in the room. And when there's no motion, it switches the TV off after five minutes. Now it does give a warning by flashing an LED so that if you are in there, you can wave your hands and it'll stop the timer. I also programmed in a special feature which I'll explain a bit later on. I hope you enjoy. I started with the box that was going to hold all the electronics and began by cutting a hole for the sensor. Once this was in place I started cutting the perf board which would hold all the electronics. I use some standoff posts to hold the perf board in place inside the box. I take the board to the box and drill through both the circuit board and the box at the same time to get the holes perfectly aligned. Then I made holes for the various sensors and LEDs. At this point I'm just going to explain exactly how this device is going to work. It's going to have one of these bad boys which is a passive infrared sensor which is what's going to be used to detect the motion in the room. Now when it detects no motion it's going to use an Arduino Nano to process the signal and switch off the TV. To switch off the TV it's going to use an infrared LED which is exactly the same thing that you'd see on your remote control. It's one of these. Now powering the device was something that I really had to think about because if I powered it externally, it would send this off signal, but after five minutes it would send it again which would switch the TV on and the TV would be going through an on off cycle every five minutes. So I looked at powering it from a USB port on the actual TV. And you'll see here I'm doing a test to make sure that the device switches off when the TV is off. And it works. Next job was to start soldering everything in place. I installed two potentiometers to adjust the brightness of the white LED and also a push button to bypass the sensor and send the signal to switch off the TV. This was more for development so if I ever had to get a new TV I could easily test it quickly without having to wait 5 minutes to see if it worked. So to connect all the sensors that wasn't going to be soldered to the board I used these pre-made leads that easily clip onto the pins of each component. Once all the leads were connected I covered everything in a generous layer of hot glue just to make sure that everything kept in place and didn't start moving once it was tucked inside the box. So the extra feature I mentioned earlier which this device is going to have is I wanted to be able to turn it off so that if there were no children in the room and we didn't have to keep making movement to keep the TV alive we could just switch the device off and put it to sleep. So to do that I found a dead button on the remote which is this record one. It doesn't, it still sends out a signal out the front of the remote but my TV can't do anything with it because there's nothing for it to record to. So I cloned this signal too, so when I hit this button it puts the program to sleep. So for the device to detect this signal I also had to use an infrared receiver which is one of these bad boys. What this does is converts the signal received into a digital signal for the Arduino Nano to process. Here I'm running a program that reads the signal from the remote control. I then copy this signal into my software so that it can be replicated on the new device. And a quick test at the development stage confirmed it was working perfectly. Next I marked the location of the hole where the infrared sensor needed to be positioned on the back of the board and then I stuck it in place. I added some more glue just to hold all the wires down. Now I didn't want a black box mounted on the wall next to the TV, I thought it looked pretty ugly. So I decided to hide it behind a floating front panel. This would overlap the box so that you couldn't see the box from most angles. 
I didn't quite trust myself enough to cut a perfectly straight line by hand, so I used a circular saw with a straight edge to get it as straight as possible. The finish wasn't actually that great, and the cut wasn't perfectly straight either. I think the blade was too coarse for the plastic, but I was able to sand it down and get the clean edge that I wanted. I use a clear acrylic rod to carry the light from the TV remote through the front plate and into the infrared sensor on the device. This is what would be used to turn the device off. I drilled some holes in an offcut from the front plate to get the right size for the rod. Once I had the hole size perfect, I used the offcut as a holder to get a square end on the rod while sanding it through the grades of some wet and dry paper. I finished it off with some metal polish which gave it a nice shine. I cut it the right size and then did the same on the other end. The result was a short acrylic rod that acted just like a clear window. I took a trip to my dad's house and borrowed his drill to drill the holes in the front plate. You're going to have to excuse the mess in his workbench. I used a rotary tool to sand the hole to the right size and then started the final assembly. Now with the LED which shows the user the state of the device, I didn't want another hole in the front plate and I thought it looked really cool if I could shine it through the white plastic. So I hot glued the LED into place in the black box making sure that it was flush to the front. Once the PIR and the circuit board supports were installed, I started connecting the wires to various LEDs and sensors within the box. One final check, everything was aligned and I clipped the circuit board into place. After much deliberation, I ended up just using hot glue to fix this floating front panel in place. As the surface was slightly uneven, this worked really well and filled in all the gaps. When I first powered it up and stood still for five minutes, I was really pleased with how the LED looked shining through that white plastic. I can adjust the brightness with the two potentiometers that I installed earlier, so I tweaked this once this was installed to get the brightness just about right. So to fix it to the wall, I didn't want to have to drill any holes, so I've just put some blue tack on the back to hold it there. Thank you for joining me on this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me make it. This device actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting it to. The sensor is sensitive enough that if anyone's in the room, it very rarely even flashes the warning light. But at the same time, I've heard that TV switch itself off so many times. And as the person who pays the electricity bill, it brings me immense happiness. If you did enjoy this one, please let me know, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback and consider subscribing for the next one. And I'll see you next time. When it flashes, you have to move your body and then it'll stop flashing. And if you don't wave your arms or 
on the other side of the screen. And then you have to turn it on again. 